a lot of what I'm involved in is trying to get a better understanding of what alchemy was and what alchemists actually did. This has always been a problem, however, because the texts that they've left us are very secretive. They're often highly metaphorical, they're written in a kind of code, and they're filled with extravagant imagery, often very beautiful woodcuts, but forbidding in the sense of what does it all mean? Well, part of what we have to understand is why did the alchemists write in this really secretive style? And there are a lot of good reasons for it. One, the alchemists thought they had, or were on the verge of getting, really powerful knowledge. That is, how to make gold out of base metals. So this is a dangerous kind of knowledge. If it falls into the wrong hands, then a person, an unscrupulous person, could destroy the economy of all, of, could destroy the economy of states, uh, by undermining the gold, the value of gold. Also, it was personally dangerous. If you claim openly that you have the knowledge or you're on the verge of getting the knowledge of how to make gold, you're likely to find yourself arrested and put into prison, being put to work by whoever the local king or, or prince is. There are lots of examples of alchemists that this happened to. Moreover, alchemy was in fact illegal in many European countries from the Middle Ages down to the early modern period. This is because rulers were afraid of undermining the gold standard, of corrupting the gold supply in Europe. So, alchemists adapted the way they wrote to be more secretive. They tended to write under false names, they attributed their writings to people who were safely dead, and they tended to write in code. They would rarely list the clear name of some substance that they were using. So let me give you an example. If an alchemist were using what he would call uh, salomoniac, or what we would nowadays call ammonium chloride, we know that it's a white, volatile salt. Instead of calling it salomoniac, for example, he might call it the white eagle, because an eagle flies just the way the salt volatilizes. Similarly, if you were talking about, let's say, nitric acid, rather than calling it spirit of saltpeter or something that would be more easy to understand, he might instead call it red dragon. Well, why? Well, because if you heat up nitric acid, you get these red vapors, so there's the red part. It essentially breathes fire, this corrosive material, that uh, there's corrosive vapors that would come out of it on heating, and it's ravenous. It devours everything in its path, just the way a dragon would do. So, for example, if we wanted to make aqua regia, a solvent that's able to dissolve gold, today we could take nitric acid and put ammonium chloride in it and make that solvent. But an alchemist might describe it as say, uh, might describe it by saying, let the red dragon devour the white eagle. Or, rather than saying it in words, he could draw an image of an actual dragon devouring an eagle. So these extravagant Baroque images that clutter alchemical texts from the 16th and 17th centuries often have a hidden chemical meaning. It was a coded way of communicating, both concealing from people who were unworthy of the knowledge, but revealing it to the people who were in the know or were worthy of being in the know. My name is Larry Principe. I'm a professor of the history of science and technology and a professor of chemistry at Johns Hopkins University.